started. Um, in order to buy nails, you have to know how much it costs per pound. And every nail has a different cost per pound, basically. Uh, but they're basically selling you iron, okay? Right, so hardware sells by the nails by the pound. If you want hundreds of nails, it takes too long to count. So you still need to know how many nails. I don't know if you've ever built something. Like when I build things, I'm neurotic and I know how many nails goes into the structure. All right, because I know I'm going to do two per board, so I need to have at least a certain number. All right, so I need to still know how to do that. So this problem is a lot like the problem of how many atoms do I need for a chemical reaction? Right? Well, I'm not going to sit there and count atoms. Very few scientists get to count atoms. So we know how many atoms you get per pound, but in our case, because it's science, we do it per gram. So we know atoms per gram. We figure that out and use that instead. So let me go through the atoms, uh, the nails problem with you, okay? So a hardware store, right? Customer buys 2.6 pounds of medium-sized nails, right? And it's, I don't know who does your weight like this, but this is just to make the problem more interesting. A dozen nails weighs 0 0.15 pounds. Right. How many nails did he buy? Well, I don't know you see the problem, right? He gets 2.6 pounds. And what does he want to know? Number of nails, right? Now, I usually work this problem backwards when I'm doing a project. I try to guess because I've had the problem where I've bought way too many, and then I have, like, thousands of nails left, and then I've done the problem where I get way too few, and I end up driving back to get more nails or just looking for nails that I can use that work. Okay. Anyways, what's the conversion between pounds and number of nails? It's this right here. A dozen nails weighs 0 0.15 pounds. So you can write that as 12 nails, dozen, right, equals 0 0.15 pounds. Um, or you could have done it as, like this, one dozen. But those are relationships that allow you to convert between pounds and numbers, okay? So 2.61 pounds, 2.6 pounds, sorry, that's LB, <laughs> times. I have one conversion factor that I need for this problem, right? There's nails and pounds. Sorry, 0 0.15 pounds. I have to get the units to cancel. I realized as I was writing it, my units weren't going to cancel. And uh, that's 12 nails. Or I could do dozens, right? Either way. So I'm going to say one dozen just for fun. Yeah. So if I did it that way, I get 2.6 divided by 0.15, 17.3 dozen. And then if I wanted to know the actual number of nails, I could take the 17.3 dozen and say there's 12 nails per dozen. And that ends up being 208. Okay, so two sig figs in this, so this becomes... 2.1 times 10 to the 2, but you know, if you're buying nails, you're probably not going to say 2.1 times 10 to the 2. You'd probably say 210, practically speaking. There's 2 because of the 2.6? Yeah, it's 2 sig figs. Oh, sorry, it's 2.60. Okay, I would have never bought 2.60, to be honest with you. So that's 3. Yeah, that's 3. It's 2.6 because of what I wrote, so it should be out to here. So it would be 208. You can write 208 perfectly good like that. Nice. And this is not, you know, it's amazingly how consistent nails are. You're probably going to be plus or minus a couple of nails of the actual count, okay? Based on sig figs. 
Okay, so atoms are way too small to count by dozens. Okay. If you just started counting atoms, though, there are so, so let me give you an impression. So if I had 18 milliliters of water, it's about a tablespoon of water. So what a tablespoon looks like about this, right? That big, more or less. We're friends. Pretend I drew that to scale, right? There would be six, zero, two, and then let's see, one, one, zero, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, f
okay, that contains this many helium atoms. Now, let me ask you a question, just a general concept. Which one of these, and you guys know this answer, don't, don't tell me you don't know this, okay? Which one of these is heavier? Some say copper, right? Why would copper be heavier? What do these do? They float. <laughs> what do these do? They sink, right? Why is, why, so 22.4 liters, one mole of helium, is not as heavy as one mole of copper. Why is one mole of copier heavy, copper heavier than one mole of helium? Exactly. If you look at helium, well, it's partly, no, it's not the density, because it's the number of atoms. A helium atom weighs four atomic mass units. Copper atoms weigh 63 atomic mass units. So if you had helium and copper, right, 63 versus four, that's way heavier, more than 10 times heavier. Right? Same number of atoms. Yeah, but the atoms are bigger. So if it was like me and Aaron's, there's a whole bunch of me and Aaron's, versus a whole bunch of U's. Forgot your name already. Rebecca. Rebecca's, right? So we had a mole of her or a mole of us. Not saying you're as heavy as I am. Just saying. But if there were a mole of us, right, which would be heavier? Well, the mole of us would be way heavier than the mole of Rebecca, right? That'd be a lot of Rebecca's, though. I don't know. That'd be 6.022 types. Of, that's a lot, okay? Okay. So how do we establish this number? This is a little bit of the history. <clears throat> this is what they said. Remember carbon-12. Carbon-12 is that isotope of carbon with a mass number of 12. So I would write it like this, 6, 12, and 6. Yeah? Six protons. How many neutrons? Six, because you just go like this, right? Subtract it. Six protons, six neutrons. They said, this is arbitrarily just defined this, okay? It's a good definition, though. That's 12 grams of carbon. Exactly 12 grams of carbon, 12. That's a mole. It's a convenient definition, okay? Because 12, right? is roughly the mass of carbon-12. So one mole of carbon weighs 12 grams, right? That contains this many, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd carbon atoms. What if I had, so one mole of carbon, this is off the periodic table here, just like not carbon-12, but all the isotopes of carbon together, they're mass would be around 12.011 grams. So the atomic, the nice relationship is, is that because we defined the mole the way we did, the mass of an element is the mass of one mole of the element in grams. If that's the case, then does any single particle, like a neutron, or a proton, one gram, It would be close to one gram. But if you remember that table, you don't need to know these numbers. They're not exactly one atomic mass unit. They're close to it, but one mole of neutrons, for example, or one mole of protons would have exactly that mass that was listed on that previous slide. Close to a gram, but slightly. Yeah, it's close to the gram, but slightly bigger. Let's say it was calcium, right? What would the mass of one mole of calcium be? Yeah, this is 40. Right, 4.078. Now, your book will call it 4.08. They round to the hundredth. That's fine. Right, that should not disqualify you from anything in your future life. Maybe. I don't know. Right, what about barium? 137. Now, if I have one mole of barium and one mole of calcium, right, which one's going to weigh more? The barium, because the atoms are bigger. The thing is, the number of atoms are exactly the same, though, okay? Still that big number. Now, they actually know this. This is rounded. This is four sig figs. 
they actually know this number like way out to somewhere down here because people spend a lot of time figuring out what this number is. Okay, people are still like you would think like a number like that people would be done with it. People are still measuring. It. Okay, I'm done with it. <laughs> kind of like pi, yeah, yeah. Pi goes on forever, right? I'm um, sorry. So let's say you had this many atoms and you wanted to convert it into moles, okay? So I have atoms going to go to moles. I would say I have 9.5 times 10 to the 27 atoms. Well, that's a big number, right? I want to convert it to moles. My conversion is Avogadro's number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms for every one mole. Whip out my handy dandy calculator. It's kind of like Blue's Clues, a handy dandy notebook. I keep thinking of that whenever you say it. That's why I say it. No, it's because I watched it, not as right. a kid. <laughs> and Steve was still the best. I know there's a new guy now, huh? Doesn't matter. <laughs> there is no, Blue's Clues is done for me. 1.98. Well, let's see, it's 9, hang on. I'm going to write some extra digits, 775 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4 uh, moles. That's a lot of moles. Okay, now, sig figs, 2, so I'm going to round to here so it becomes 2.0. Now, if I wanted to know how much that weighed, I would have to know how much each mole weighed. I would have to go to the periodic table and pick the number out. Did you not get two? I'll get that look up. I didn't get two. I got 1.5. Mm. That still rounds to two. <laughs> Sorry. I probably did. You know, I don't have the fancy calculator that has the window on it, so I didn't see what I typed in. Try to type it right. 9.5 E27 divided by 6.022 E23. Yeah, like I said, one five seven. It probably said that before, and I'm half blind. My old age. There. Okay. Yeah, but it still rounds. Does it round? No, it rounds to one point six. Darn it. Okay. Oops. Hang on. So this becomes one point six moles. But that's the idea. Now, if I wanted to know how much that 1.6 moles weighed, what would I have to know? What, it was. what a mole weighs, right? So I would get that off the periodic table if it's an atom. I would just find out how much whatever those atoms are weighed, and I could do that conversion. Okay? A mole of what? A mole of what? I, just don't, I haven't said here. Right. It's just atoms to moles. And this conversion, by the way, the reason it doesn't say what is it's not asking for what. Right. It's like converting... 12 do, uh, 1,200 to dozens. That's 100 dozen. Does it matter what it is? It doesn't. It's just a count. I probably should know this, but you got the 4 because you subtracted the 27 from the 23, right? Or the 23 from the 27, correct? Oh, no, you know, I just plugged it in and, came, and punched it. You no, could have done it that way, yeah. Under the 4? Yeah. You, I'll show you how to do that in calculator so you can... Yeah. But yeah, all you have to do is subtract okay. 23 from 27, and that works. Hey. Okay. Hey. So, how many gold atoms? We're gonna do two things. I'm trying to shorten this up a little bit. How many gold atoms are in a pure gold ring containing 8.83 times 10 to the minus two moles of Au gold? And let's calculate how much it weighs just for fun too. Okay. So I have moles. 
I'm trying to figure out atoms. So I'm going to take 8.83 times 10 to the minus 2 moles. All right. I'm going to convert that to atoms using Avogadro's number. 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. That's atoms in a mole. So, whip out my handy dandy calculator. I get 5.317. Good. Times 10 to the 22 atoms. A uh, sig figs? Yeah, 5132. The sig figs are here. So that's 5132. Okay, sorry, that, that it glitched on me when I wrote that one. Yeah, nothing to be sorry about. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I did it doing my calculator. So a quick calculator lesson, okay? If I want to enter 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, I type in 6.022, and then for this, mm -hmm. there's a button. It's usually an E or an EE button, and 23, like that. Okay? okay. Thank you. So, that's how I did it. I just enter it like that, and it just comes out. Well, then you have to, then... <laughs> Then, as Wayne was saying, right, you have to figure out when one is bigger than. Um, you got to actually figure it out. If there were, if there was a boat. Yeah. Same, uh, I'm not going to go over that part of math, but okay. you, like if you multiply it, and you get an extra decimal place. Then you shift it over, and you got to do all that extra work. And that's great if you want to do that. No, I've had students do that before, and it's fine. It works, but I'm not going to explain that part. I'm going to say, use your calculator. Oh, 5.32 times 10 to the 22nd. Okay, let's, let's look at this problem again. Let's say I wanted to know how much that gold ring weighed. Okay. Is it bling worthy? Is it big enough? So, eight point, so I want to know how much it weighs. So what do I need to know about gold? How much a mole weighs, right? So how am I going to know how much a mole weighs? 196.97 grams for one mole. Okay, so uh, to go from moles to grams, I need to know how much each one weighs. This is known as the molar mass. So for gold, it is 190, it's a lot, 196, that's why people like it, 0.97 grams is one mole. So to do the conversion, I would say 8.83 times 10 to the minus 2 moles of AU times, what do I want to cancel? Mole, so I'll put the mole at the bottom, one mole. And on top, I'll put 196.97 grams. So what do I need to do? Just multiply them together. Lots of people might say, get your handy-dandy calculator. Seven times 
times 8.83 times 10 to the 2. And then on this one, I did E. I have to, you have to use the change sign, but you have to put a, the negative sign in there. And I get 17.39 grams. So how many sig figs do I have? Three. So 17.4 grams. That's a pretty hefty ring. Yeah, it's a big ring. Okay, I'm gonna skip a few slides because stuff I've already covered. Okay. By the way, just just for fun, this is a mole of carbon. It's 12 grams. That's the mole of sulfur. It's 32 grams. They look very different size wise, but you know, sulfur is a much heavier atom. All right. So let's do this. Calculate the number of moles of calcium in 91.4 grams of calcium. So I'm going from grams to moles. What do I need to know? Yeah, I need to know how much a mole of calcium weighs, right? So what do we call that? What's the name for that number? Molar. molar mass, yeah. So I go to the periodic table. I look up the molar mass for calcium. I find that it's 40.078. I'm just going to call it 40.08. I'm going to round it. I shouldn't do that because it's given to me here. But your book, I'm trying to match what's in your book. So when you go look for the numbers, you'll find it, okay? When you take chem 1A, you don't get to round anything. You just use all the numbers they give you. So 91.4. Grams of calcium, and then 40.08, I want the grams to cancel, right? So the grams will go to the bottom for every one mole calcium. Okay. So what do I do? Get my handy dandy calculator, 91.4, divided by 40.8, 08, sorry. So I get 2.28, I get 2.280 actually, but I'm just going to round it now, moles of calcium. If I wanted to know how much that, uh, how many atoms that was, I'd have to multiply that by Avogadro's number because that's how many atoms are in a mole, right? So I've got, but I'm not asking for that. It's just number of moles. So that's the number of moles. And that looks about right. Yeah. So let me show you one other thing. I'm going to write, start writing stuff on the side here so that it stays up. So far we have, starting with atoms, right? You can convert between atoms and what? Moles, right? That's what we've talked about today. By the way, the abbreviation for mole is mole. They get rid of the E. Wow, that helped me. Thanks, guys. And between moles, with that moles, I can figure out grams. Okay. This is your road map. The numbers that go in here are always the same type of number. This number is always the same. This is Avogadro's number. And this number is always what? Molar mass. Do you know what they call it when you have 10 to the 23rd avocado? <laughs> It's a guacamole. Oh my god. That was so horrible. I'm gonna tell my friends. Or not. 
Actually, it's one way to get rid of your friends. So, um, <laughs> let's do this one real quick. Calculate the grams of sulfur. This is just another example. Right. And just kind of think about the road map. Grams of sulfur in 2.878 moles of sulfur, right? Uh, grams of sulfur is what I want. Moles of sulfur is what I'm given. It's always the molar mass that goes between, okay? So I can do one more of these, I believe. Yeah. Come on. So I have two. So I'm going from moles to grams. So I'll need the molar mass of sulfur, which is 32.07. What's it in your book? I don't think it's 07 in your book. 32.06. Hmm, we have disagreement. 32.07. Although, yeah, it doesn't matter. It would still be wrong. 32.07. Grams is equal to one mole of S. So I have 2.78 moles of S, and I want to get to grams, so I'm going to set it up so moles cancel. So it's one mole is 32.07 grams. It's interesting, uh, you know, we think these are like, I told you those numbers are the same on Earth. Actually, around the Earth, they vary a little bit. And so they actually, there's newer periodic tables that talk about that error. Okay, so 2.78 times 32.07. Oops, I got negative 82. Nice. What's it in? Is it 82.15? Is that what you guys get? Yeah, I hit a negative sign here somewhere, so my fingers are too fat. 2.7. What's that? Getting rid of moles times 30. Times 32.07. 89.15. I have to go and get myself a new calculator. Uh, oh, three sig figs. So that becomes 80, and this is grams of sulfur, so 89.2 grams of sulfur. Another practice problem? Sorry, I'm just whipping through these things. How many carbon atoms are there in 0.58 grams of diamond? Is that a big diamond, by the way? I don't know. 0.58 It doesn't sound very big, huh? So I'm going to go to carbon atoms. So this thing you have to remember... Right? Grams, moles, atoms. There is no direct grams to atoms. Okay? Not really. You could make a conversion if you want. We try not to teach that. So, I'm going to go 0 0.58 grams. I need to convert that over based on the map. I need to go to moles next. So, how am I going to do that? Periodic table, I get the molar mass, 12.01 for every one mole of carbon. Or you could do railroad tracks, sorry. I forgot I do railroad tracks. And then what? That gets me to moles, right? To get to atoms, Avogadro's number. And this is for every one mole of carbon. So this is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd carbons for every one mole of carbon. Um, and you get 0.58 times. Ay, ay, ay. Divide by 12. And I get 2.2 2 
2.9 times 10 to the 22nd? You could stop me if I'm wrong. Uh, that's how many carbon atoms it is. It's much more impressive than the grams. Uh, one thing to think about is when you're converting to atoms, there's always going to be a lot of them. So like, if you do it and you get a really small number, you're like, mm, that can't be right. A okay, number of atoms is always some sort of huge number. Okay. Yeah, just checking to make sure it makes sense, right? Okay, so um, just a little side note. Uh, I'm going to... Do you want to do this one too? Just do it? Yeah. Atoms to mass. Okay, so I've got helium atoms. I want to know how much that many helium atoms weighs. So I have 1.23 times 10 to the 24th helium atoms. So I'm going to convert that from atoms to moles. Once I have moles, I can get the mass. Okay, so, one point, so I'm going to go 1.23 times 10 to the 24th helium, right? Convert that to moles. I got to go 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd for every one mole. Now, that's the conversion to moles of anything, really, right? The mole is a mole is a mole. But if I want to know the moles, of how much that helium weighs, then I need to go over the periodic table and grab its molar mass. So that's 4.00 grams of helium for every one mole of helium. And all those little units, all right, this cancels with that, leaves me with grams. This bottom is just, I forgot to put the helium in here, so I'm going to slip that in there. That's helium atoms, cancels out with that. So I get to go... 1.23 times 10 to the 24th divided by 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd times 4. About 8.17 grams. Questions? Feel the steam rising off the top of your head. Think about it this way. The harder you think, the more calories you burn. Um, it's like aerobics for your brain. You can tell it didn't really work for me, but still. You know. I compensate for all the thinking I do. I eat. Okay. Oh, this is kind of a fun, these are some fun facts from your book, right? Uh, 22 pennies is that many copper atoms. If you had that many pennies, it would cover the Earth's surface to 300 meters. What, you know what amazes me about that calculation? Is somebody figured it out. Like, gee, I wonder how deep the Earth would be in pennies if I had a mole of pennies. Like, What? I suppose that can solve world hunger at some point. Um, if you had one crystal of a granulated sugar has a, a mass of less than a milligram, right? And a diameter of less than 0.1 millimeters. So they're tiny. You saw them the other day, sugar crystals, right? A mole of sugar crystals covers the state of Texas to a depth of several feet. Now, have you ever driven across Texas? That is one big state. It's horizontal like California is vertical. You drive all day long. And you're in Texas, yeah. It's just, it's a fun state to drive across, by the way. Uh, and there's some fun things you can do there, but factoids. Okay, so now we're going to do, so that was atoms by the gram. Go ahead. Um, so just to, okay, so you would only reference the element's atomic mass when you're converting from moles to grams. Yeah. You don't have to check that when you're going from atoms to moles and moles to atoms. No. Okay. All that is is Avogadro's number. Okay. Yeah, and so that's the same. This part of the map is the same for everything. This part of the map depends on what it is.
Okay, so now we've done atoms, and so what I want to talk a little bit about, and this is kind of the stuff I skipped at the last chapter, at the very end, is how do you know how much a molecule weighs? Okay, so I'm going to make a little, a little blank board here, and we're going to talk about the molar mass of atoms, right? How do you get that? Molar mass of atoms is from where? Atomic mass from the periodic table, right? So make a little note here. Molar mass. <coughs> periodic table. Ay, ay, ay. And it's the it's same as the atomic mass. But the units are grams per mole. Okay. What did I pick on him? Rudy. There's Rudy. All the way in the back. And I know Rudy works a lot, and so I know he's a little tired, so I'm going to help wake him up. So I wanted to figure out how much Rudy weighs. So Rudy is my molecule, right? And he's made up of constituent elements. Arms, legs, and body. Okay? So that's his chemical formula, Rudy. Arms, two, so arms, subscript two, legs, subscript two. I want to know how much Rudy weighs. What do I need to do? Besides, I can't just weigh him. Well, I have to cut off his arms, <laughs> and I have to weigh those, right? I have to know how much his arms weigh, and I cut off his legs, and I know how much his legs weighs. And I take what's left of him, and I stick that on a scale, and I see how much that weighs, and then I want to know how much Rudy weighs, so what do I do? Yeah. I add it all up. Same thing with molecules. Molecules are made up of atoms, right? So all you do is you take all the constituent atoms, you add them all up, and that tells you how much it weighs. Okay, so, sorry, Rudy. I didn't mean to be violent. He's drinking his monster now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the monster guy was at UC Santa Cruz, and my son likes to make money. He's at UC Santa Cruz. He couldn't sell the sodas, the monster rep, couldn't sell the monsters after the end, so he, like, gave them away. I've got like a lifetime supply of those things at home. Crazy. I don't even drink them because they make me feel horrible. I can drink like 10 cups of coffee and be fine. I drink two of those, I'm like, mm. get kind of crabby. I don't know what it is. <sighs> but I still, they're good. <laughs> no doubt. Uh, so let's make up a molecule, okay? We're going to make up CO2. I want to know how much a molecule of CO2 weighs. So what I have to do is I have carbon, right? And I have oxygen. Now, how many oxygens do I have in there? Two, two. two, right? So there's times two here. So I want to do the mass. This is 12.01. And for oxygen, it's going to be 16.00, rounding it, times two. So this is going to become... 32.00 plus 12.01. I'm just adding the arms to the body, right? And that becomes 44.01 as the mass of one molecule of CO2. So if I have one mole of CO2, now this is atomic mass units technically, but if I have one mole of CO2, it weighs 44.01 grams. Okay, next problem. I have okay, 22.5 grams of dry ice, and I want to know how many moles of dry ice that is. So I skipped a couple of slides. How many moles of dry ice that is. So I have grams. I have grams of CO2. I'm trying to find moles of CO2. It doesn't matter that it's atoms, right, or molecules. The format is still the same. I need the molar mass of CO2 to do the conversion, to go from grams to moles. So like now I'm starting here, right? I'm trying to get myself over here. 
Molar mass is always the thing that goes in between. So I just did that calculation. I know the molar mass of CO2, 44.01. So 22.5 grams of CO2, converting it over to moles. Now I'm going to do railroad tracks just because that's what I said I should do. 44.01 grams is one mole of CO2. So I do that conversion. I get 3.0. 7, 8, blah, 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 blah. So that becomes 3.08. Actually, I think I did that wrong. Yeah, 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 yeah. I did that wrong. Let me double check here. Yeah, 22.5 divided by... Yeah, 44. It's almost exactly half. 44.01, 0 0.51 moles. Yeah. All right. Five, one. Not the way I use them. Well, that's, you know, they don't care. They just take out whatever you put in. Did they say grams? That's moles, huh? Moles. Yeah, that's why I love having that display where I can see where my fat finger rolled over the keyboard. Because you're going to mess up somewhere. Well, and once you, you know, go yeah. to the next one, it disappears. Yeah. And you don't know where you've been. You check. Okay, so we're going to do this one. How many moles of NO2 and 1.18 grams of NO2? Okay. So what do I need to do? Well, it's a gram to mole conversion. How am I going to get it? How do I do it? Nitrogen, so I'm going to look at NO2, so I have nitrogen, and then I have oxygen times 2, right? So I'm going to 14.01, I'm going to round it, to be what's in your book. And then oxygen, same as it was before, 16, but there's two of them, so I multiply it by 2. Add all that up, I already did the adding up, 46.01. So I know one mole is 46.01 grams. And so now I'm going to go um, 1.18 grams, bless you, times, and then 46.01 grams in one mole. And then I 1.18. Divided by 46.01. And that's not very many moles. It's 0 0.0256 moles of NO2. Well, you know, yeah, the grams is small <laughs> compared to the number of grams in a mole, yeah. Okay. So you have a fraction of a mole. Last one, and we're going to take a break, okay? Last one, and we're going to take a break. So um, <clears throat> we want to do the molecules in a sample of water that has a mass of 3.64 grams. Okay, so let's think about what we have, right? We have grams. Oops. We have grams. And then we want to go to molecules. So can you go directly from grams to molecules? It's a two-step process, right? You got to go grams to moles and then moles to molecules. So it'd be grams to moles to molecules. Because you know how many molecules are in the mole. Yes. Gosh darn it. Molecules. There we go. So Grams to moles, I'd have to do water. So hydrogen is 1.01, .01, oxygen 16, 
So I'm just going to write it down. It's 18.02, okay? So one mole of H2O is 18.02 grams, and I just did that by looking at my periodic table, okay? So I have 3.64 grams, then 18.02 grams for every one mole, and then moles to molecules is always Avogadro's number, so it's going to be 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd H2Os for every one mole of H2O. Oh, wait, so I did calculate. So 3.64 divided by 18.02 times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, and I get 1.22 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay, let's take a 10-minute break. All right, so formula ratios are the conversion factors that we use for molecules, but it's really not any different than anything you normally do every day if you want to figure out how many things you have attached to something else. Okay, here's a carbon tetrachloride, right? So carbon tetrachloride has four chlorines for every carbon. Its chemical formula is... CCl4, all right? So you could say one, it's kind of like the chair, right? One molecule of carbon tetrachloride, and then they don't say equals, but it's the same as saying equal, is the equivalent to four CLs, atoms. Now, here's, this is where this gets to be really useful. If I have a mole of CCl4, I have four mole, moles of Cl. So the formula ratio, if you're talking about number of atoms in a molecule, is the same as the number of moles of atoms and the number of moles of molecules. Okay. It's proportional. What's that? Can you re-say <laughs> I don't know. I'm getting deaf in my old age. Okay, so the number of moles of O in 18 moles of CO2. Okay, just look at it. How do you figure it out? Well, how many moles of O are in CO2? There's two moles for every one mole of CO2, right? So from the formula, that's this guy here. I can say two moles of O is equivalent to, okay, one mole of CO2. And that's my conversion factor. Now, you know, you don't think about it like this when you're doing these problems, maybe, but this is how you do it systematically, okay? So I said 18 moles of CO2. Or do it like this. And there's two moles. I wish they wouldn't use O because it always looks like zero. For every one mole CO2. The moles of CO2 cancel out. And you'll end up with 36 moles of O. So again, that's called a formula ratio that we use for those kinds of calculations or conversions. Crazy.
Okay, let's do this one. I have 1.4 moles of H2SO4. All right. How many moles of O are there? So conceptually, how do you do it? I mean, when you're just looking at it, how would you do it? Make your ratio, right? There's four oxygens for every sulfuric acid, so you end up multiplying times four. Okay. It's like if you said, how, if I had 1.4 chairs, how many legs would I have? It's the equivalent kind of thinking. Well, I'd have 1.4 times four, because I know that's how many chair legs there are per chair. Right? So from our chemical formula, we're going to generate the mole ratio. Four moles of oxygen. And uh, there's actually another symbol I'm going to teach it to you. That little omega on top of the equal sign actually means chemically equivalent to. Okay? Or you can use the dots. The books like the dots. Yeah, it's fine. Um, that's equivalent to one mole of H2SO4. So I have... 1.4 moles of H2SO4, 4 moles of O for every 1 mole of H2S. Shoots. I'm writing faster than the tablet can keep up. So it's 4 times that? 5.6? Uh, 5.6. .6. And again, I set it up so those units cancel out. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Yeah, bless you. slides, but I think I might have to. Okay. Okay, so um, let's skip this slide, but I'll come back to it in a little bit. I'm going to start here, and I'll come back to those other slides in a second. Okay, so we're going to talk about percent composition. Okay? Percent composition, or we refer to it often as mass percent. Now, there's a couple of ways that you can get percent composition. One is experimentally, okay? So, for example, look at this, this that's down here. It says three, 0 0.358 grams of chromium reacts with oxygen to form 0 0.523 grams of metal oxide, right? And they want you to calculate the percent by mass of chromium in the oxide. Well, how do you do percentage? It's part, right, over the whole times 100%. So in this case, the part is the chromium. That's part of the oxide. So I would just say 0 0.358 for every 0 0.523 times 100%. And what that gives me is 68.5%. Okay, so Really quickly, this number, what does it mean, per cent? Per hundred, per hundred right? So, in other words, this is another conversion factor. And what it tells me is that there are 68.5 grams of chromium, that's CR, And chemically equivalent to 100 grams of the oxide. So 
So this is a way for me to convert between grams of oxide and grams of chromium by knowing what the mass percent is in chromium oxide. So, so let's do this. I'm going to make up a problem. Let me write this number down so I don't forget it because even though it's on this slide, I will forget it. 68.5 grams of chromium, chemically equivalent to uh, 100 grams of oxide. So I'm going to make up a new problem based on this number, okay? Okay. So let's say you had 155 grams of chromium. How many grams... of oxide could you produce? Okay, so you have 155 grams of chromium. You need to go to grams of the oxide, right? So what you need is that conversion factor and that's what this percentage is. It's the conversion factor between grams of chromium and grams of oxide. So I would set this problem up. 155 grams of chromium. I want grams of chromium to cancel. So I know it's 68.5 grams of chromium. for every 100 grams of oxide. Okay. Do the calculation. Units cancel out. Chromium cancels out. So 155 divided by 68.5 times 100. And I'd get 226 grams of oxide. Okay. So this mass percent number is really important because if you can get the mass percent, right, then you can calculate all kinds of things about a compound by knowing the percentage of an element in a compound. Go ahead. Could you go back to the previous slide? I can try. That one? Oh, yeah, that's the stuff that was written on the slide, yeah. yeah. All right. Why is there a need to convert it to a mass percent when you have that same ratio in the given? Like, couldn't you just use the 0.358 grams and the 0.5 yeah, grams? Yeah, I'll get to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just an extra step. But one, one, is, um, one is how you get the percentages, right? So I'm going to show you another way to get the percentages just off the periodic table. Okay. So it's just another way. If you know that's the ratio, you can just that's use it. That's what I meant, because we kind of just yeah. the ratio to a nicer one, but it was equivalent. So. Yeah, but the, the way it would be reported, typically, people would report it as a mass percent. So you typically find mass percentages a lot easier than you find, like, empirical data. Okay? Okay, so let's do another. So, so we want to figure out mass percent. So, so one way to do it was just by using, like, data. The other way to do it is by using a chemical formula. So, uh, favorite molecule? Anybody have a favorite molecule? H2O. H2O, okay. Wow, that was just boring, but that's okay, I'll take it. I actually know those numbers in my head, so I, it's a good one that you picked. I want to calculate the mass percent of Elements, I'm just going to do all of it, elements in water. Sometimes the questions just say, what is the mass percentage of water? 
And they just kind of leave it dangling. And what they want you to do is calculate for every element what the mass percentage is. So that's another reason why H2O is good, because there's only two. <laughs> right. So we're going to do H2O. So we know that one molecule of water, I could calculate its mass by looking at the periodic table. right? So it turns out one molecule or one mole of water if you want to do it that way, is 18.02 grams. It, that's one mole. If I want the mass percent of hydrogen in that water molecule, and this is going to be true generally, right? I can just say, well, hydrogen has a mass of 1.01, .01, and there's two of them, right? So I can say 1.01 .01 times 2, this is per mole, that's 2.02 .02 grams of hydrogen. So the mass percent of hydrogen in water is just going to be 2.02 .02 divided by 18.02 .02 times 100. And that comes out to be uh, 11, I think, 0.1% or something like that. Let me figure it out for sure. Uh, 11.2%. So 11.2% of the mass of water is just hydrogen. So if you had, right, a kilogram, a thousand gram, or let's, this is to do simple. If you had a hundred grams of water, 11.2 grams of that would be hydrogen. Okay, this number is actually an important one because that's how you can figure out how much hydrogen you can get for like a fuel cell by converting water into hydrogen gas. You can get 11 grams of hydrogen that way. Okay, I'll talk about it if you're curious later. Well, how do you figure out the percentage of oxygen? Yeah, the lazy people subtract. <laughs> right? That's what I would do. I would say, well, it's 100%, right? So 100 minus 11.2, 88.8, rounding. So the percent of oxygen is equal to 88.8%. Okay, so this is, this is where people uh, like she and I get trapped. This is the problem we have. We're assuming we calculated the first one right. <laughs> and if you didn't, I knew water is around 11%, so I'm okay there. But if we didn't calculate the first one right, then the second one would be wrong too. And actually, a good check for your percent calculations is just to calculate all of them separately and add them up to see if you get 100%. Okay. That's just uh, the way you check your work. Okay. So let's do the oxygen. Yeah, so if you want to do the oxygen... Oops. Sorry, I put a big scrawl on my screen here. Oxygen is, what's, ma what's the mass of oxygen? 16. 16. So I'm going to do the percent of oxygen. So it's 16. Oh, sorry. Hello. Is 16.00 grams divided by 18.02 grams times 100%. And hopefully, this comes out to be like 88.8. That's my check. So 16 divided by 18.02 comes out to be 88.8. This is not usually where people have problems. It's when there's like four or five elements, and they're trying to do it, and they screw one of them up. So they add them all up, and they get another one wrong, too, right? That's just... Just be careful when you do these. Okay. Okay, so um, I'm going to go back down to that other slide. This is how I like to do these problems. 
What we want to do is calculate the mass of oxygen in 5.8 gram sample of sodium hydrogen carbonate. Okay, so this one's a pain in the butt. Why is it a pain in the butt? Because you got to add all those up, right? So I'm going to cheat. Because what do I need? I need the molar mass of sodium hydrogen carbonate, right? What is the molar mass of sodium hydrogen carbonate? Checking. The right. answer is about 84 grams per mole. Uh, 84.01 grams for hydrogen carbonate. I think she just gave me hydrogen carbonate. Oh, maybe that's right. So 84 point, I'm going to just rely on that for now. So save a little time. A lot of times you can just look these numbers up. Yeah. Actually, okay, um, there's, a, there's a great app. It's, um, so this is what I tell people to do. Calculate the molar mass a few dozen times just to make sure you can use it. And then after that, get an app to do it. There's, there's this app that I've been using for years, and I used it when it was a web page. Right? It's called CMM. And what do you think it stands for? Calculate molar mass. And all you have to do is type the element symbol in the subscript. If there's parentheses, you put parentheses, and it'll tell you the answer. In fact, what it also does, it tells you the percent, percent masses of each element. So like on these problems, it's a way to check your work. Right? No. No. <laughs> but I won't ask you to calculate molar mass that many times. Like on a test, I might ask you to calculate it three times, four times. And then other problems, I'll give it to you. Because I only want to know that you can do it. I don't want to test every question. If you can't do one, I don't want to make it the linchpin for all the problems that involve molar mass. So I usually put it for calculate the molar mass for two or three compounds. And then like if you have to do a grams to mole to conversion, like I'm not testing molar mass. I'll give you a molar mass for some of those and just say calculate the number of moles or number of atoms and give you some of the information you need to do it. See, I'm not as, as horrid a person as people say. <laughs> well, actually, maybe I am, but I try not to be. So then you get like 35.5? Yeah, so, so 84.01, okay, uh, grams for NaHCO3 for every one mole, okay. Now, for the oxygen, okay, the mass of oxygen in that sample is 3 times 16, so I go 3 times 16.00 grams. That comes out to be 48 grams okay, of oxygen. So to get the percent of oxygen and sodium hydrogen carbonate, I would just say this. Percent yeah, oxygen. Now I'll show you two ways to do this problem. One is faster. This is more standard, what I'm showing you. 48 grams for every um, 84.01 grams times 100 percent. So I get 48 divided by 84.01 times 100. And that's 57.14 percent. Seven point one four, yeah. Okay, so if you have a five point eight gram sample of sodium carbonate and you want to know how much oxygen in, is in there, right? You can just do this. I'm gonna start doing this a little bit. Grams of oxygen, it's gonna be equal to, right? Five point eight grams of NaHCO3 times 57.14 grams of oxygen for every 100 grams of NaHCO3. And so it equals, and you can calculate that number. Uh, 
times uh, 5.8. So that's 3.31, 3.3, because I have two sig figs, 3.3 grams of oxygen. Okay. Now, if I hadn't wanted to, I could have actually cheated a little bit, and I could have just used the ratio of 48 to 84 to do the conversion as well. But I just wanted to show you how mass percent could be used in a problem. So some problems you'll be given the mass percent, some problems you'll be asked to calculate the mass percent and use that in a calculation. Okay. okay. What's that? 3.3 grams of oxygen, yeah. And 100 grams of sodium. So this is, this is 57.14 grams of oxygen and 100 grams of sodium carbonate. That just comes from a percent. Mm -hmm. So out of 5.8 grams of sodium hydrogen carbonate, 3.3 grams is oxygen. Yeah. All right, new topic. Empirical formula. So we're getting to the point where we can start talking about chemical formulas. And there's this thing called an empirical formula. What does empirical mean? Anybody know? Right. Oh, it actually says here. It's what you observe. So experimental. Empirical formula. So it turns out, let's say this was my formula. Let me write it up here so I can point to things. Let's say this was my formula, C6H12O6, okay? If you look at this formula, that's, a, uh, that's the molecular formula for glucose, okay? It shows me exactly what's in the comp each molecule of the compound. There's six carbon atoms, there's 12 hydrogens, and six oxygens. But when you do this experiment and you say, oh, I want to know the chemical formula for glucose, what you actually get is not the actual numbers directly, but you get the ratios of the numbers. In other words, you get that there's one carbon for every two hydrogens for every one oxygen. And that's why it's empirical, because that's what you get when you do the experiment. Okay, so empirical formula is C, H, 2, and O. It turns out this empirical formula represents lots and lots and lots of different things. It represents glucose, fructose, uh, mannose from like mannitol. Um, what else is, would you be familiar with? What's that? Sucrose? No, it doesn't represent sucrose, so it would be different than sucrose. But it represents, there's about, in terms of sugars, there's actually 16 sugars that have this formula. Dextrose? Huh? Dextrose? dextrose is glucose, actually. Yeah, dextrose. They call it, you know why they call it dextrose, though? It's because it takes light and rotates it in the clockwise direction. So if you shine polarized light through it, the light actually turns as it goes through. Yeah. Yeah, it's good stuff. Anyways, it's the reason why my... One of the reasons why my wife stopped doing research in graduate school is because every time she was doing an experiment, the dextrose was converting from one form to another, and it made her crazy. So, yeah. And her only consolation is that she married me. So, <laughs> sorry. And I'm not sure she won on that end either. So, um, so the empirical formula is what we call the simplest formula. It's the smallest whole number ratios, okay? Molecular formula, it's always whole numbers, but it's a multiple of some empirical formula, usually, okay? Not always, but usually. So C, H, oops, C, H, 2, O is probably a molecular, um, an empirical formula. But you know something like C6H12O6 has to be a molecular formula because you can divide out the sixes here, okay? What about H2O2? Huh? 
No, it's not empirical because you can divide the twos out. Hydrogen, yeah. So this is actually the formula for hydrogen peroxide. This is its empirical formula. So that would be the molecular, that would be the empirical. Okay. Again, when you do the experiment to figure out what the chemical formula is, all you find is there's one mole of hydrogen for every mole of oxygen. Okay. That's what you're getting from the experiment. Okay. I'm going to just do a problem and show you how it's done. Um, Right, you know the empirical formula for water, but we're just going to pretend you don't. Okay. So you do the decomposition of water, and it's done by electrolysis. This is actually something you can do at home. You get a 9-volt battery, and you put a copper wire on each end, and you put a, a little water in a, in a cup and sprinkle a little salt in there because it helps. It makes the water more conductive. And you stick the, the copper wires in there, and what it'll do is the copper wires will begin to bubble. And the bubbling is to creation of hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. Okay. Um, we made one that you, hold, you hook up two 12-volt battery, car batteries to, and it literally spews gas out of it. It goes really fast. We these giant explosive balloons out of it. I, yeah, I don't know why you would do that other than to blow things up. <clears throat> but we had fun with it. It was a science and engineering club. It was mostly interested in destroying things. So we're going to decompose water. You get 3.0 grams of hydrogen, 24 grams of oxygen. We're going to figure out its empirical formula. Now, the empirical formula is a reflection of the mole ratios of the elements. So I'm going to go start like this. This is the standard format, okay? You take grams of hydrogen. So I have 3 grams of hydrogen. And I'm going to put underneath it, I'm going to write 24 grams of oxygen. The next thing I'm going to do is convert that over to moles. So this is grams. I'm going to convert it over to moles. Now, the shortcut is to divide these by their molar mass. So I'm going to show it once the long way. So I'm going to get the number of moles for each one. It's going to be 3, kind of boring, divided by 1.01. I'm going to get 2.97. And then I'm going to take 24 and divide it by 16. And I get 1.5. That's moles of oxygen. So what's the formula for water, by the way? H2. H2O, right? So how, do I, how would I get that information from here? I would need to know the ratio of hydrogen to oxygen. But this is done in moles, not in grams. So I say this is moles and this is my mole ratio. So I'll call it mole rat. Okay. The mole ratio is 2.97, which is what? About 3, right? Divided by 1.5. Now, what are the units on that? It's moles of hydrogen for every mole of oxygen. So if I divide that out, that becomes about, okay, two moles of hydrogen for every one mole of oxygen. So that is the empirical formula for water. When I convert these masses over to moles, this mole ratio is telling me this is H2O.
with an implied subscript of a one, right? We're just going to do a bunch of examples. We'll do them always the same way. Okay. I'm just going to fit, let people finish copying. Okay, so next problem. Okay. <laughs> what I'm saying is that the three hydrogen and the 24 oxygen comes from like 1.5. Yeah. Yes. I think I agree with you. I'm not positive. Yeah. yeah. So, so sample of compound is decomposed in a laboratory, and this is what you get, okay? Calculate the empirical formula. So what I need to do to figure out what the ratio of the elements is, I need to convert it to moles and then just do a ratio, okay? So I'm going to go uh, 165 grams of carbon. So this is going to be my mass, okay, 165 grams of C, and um, 27.8 grams of H. And 220.2 grams of oxygen. So the first thing I want to do is what? Convert it to moles so I can look at the ratios of the atoms in the compound. So I'm going to do moles over here, and then I'm not going to write it out. I'm just going to divide each element by its molar mass. So for carbon, right, 165, I divide it by 12.01, right? So I get 13.74. And then 27.8, I divide by 1.01, so 27.5, and 220.2 divided by... 16. So I get 13.76. Okay, so now we have three things, right? And I want to do mole ratios. You notice these are about the same, right? So these will end up being my one. But what we typically do is pick the smallest one and divide by the smallest one. So even those, these, I know are going to both be about one in the formula. I'm going to go ahead just for form. To get the ratio, I'm going to divide by this number. Okay. So let me do that. I'm going to write this out in my mole rat. Wasn't that from Parks and Recreation or something? What's the name of that band? What was it? Mouse rat. Mouse rat. Yeah, it's close. Mole rat, mouse rat. I got my wife to start watching that. <laughs> it's our stupid hour. You know, you watch a couple of episodes of Parks and Rec. I'm going to watch the whole thing over again as soon as this class is over. Oh, my God. <laughs> my recreation time, not good. So I'm going to divide by 13.74. I'm going to divide by 13.74, and I'm going to divide by 13.74, okay? This is going to be versus moles of carbon, so I'm not going to write it all over again. I'm going to write these numbers over here. So 13.74 uh, divided by 13.74 is 1. And by golly, you should have one of those in your formula. I have one mole of carbon for every mole of carbon. That's what that means. And 27.52 27 divided by 
2.00. And the last one, it's going to be 1.0. If it's not, I'm going to lie and say that it is. No, it is. So, um, what does this tell me? The formula, oh my gosh, this is that formula again. What does it tell me? The formula is C H 2 O. So there's, for every mole of carbon, there's two moles of hydrogen and one mole of oxygen. I told you there's lots of things with that formula. I don't even know what this was. <sighs> okay. A lot of times this data is gotten to you as percentages. So I'm going to do one more problem. I got Actually, I have a handful of problems here. That's like a sugar. Yeah, just like sugar, CH2O. It's yeah. Many organic compounds have this empirical formula because of the way carbons and oxygens bond together. Yeah. This always happens to be the way it is. Okay, ibuprofen, <clears throat> an aspirin substitute. I guess we all know that by now has a mass percent composition of this, okay? Calculate the empirical formula for ibuprofen. So what does mass percent mean? It means grams per 100 grams, right? So rather than taking these as percentages, I just take them as grams. Okay, so in, if I had, I just make this up, pretend, right? I have 100 grams of ibuprofen. I don't really, I'm just pretending I have 100 grams. If I had 100 grams, I'd have 75.69 grams of carbon. I'd have 8.8 .8 grams of hydrogen. And I have 15.51 grams of oxygen. And all that adds up to be the 100 gram sample. Now, you could play this game all day long. You could say I had one gram, I had two grams, I had three grams. You could calculate the actual masses that you had. But it's so much easier just to assume that you have 100. So that's what we do. Okay. So I'm going to do the same problem. This is going to be my mass. So it's uh, 75, you said it, 75.69 grams of carbon. Oh, I didn't leave enough room there. Look at that. Ha, made more room. Um... 8.8 .8 grams of hydrogen. And 15.51 grams of oxygen. So then I'm going to convert to moles next. So mouse, moles, mouse rat, <laughs> moles to mole ratios. So 75.69 divided by 12.011, or 01, sorry. I end up with 6.30 moles carbon, 8.8 .8 divided by 1.01. Uh, I end up with, uh, I wrote 88, huh. do that again. Just to make sure I didn't miss too many keys. 8.71. And then 15.51 divided by 16. What am I going to divide by? Smallest one, because I want to get ratios. And in chemical formulas, just remember the ratios, right? The formulas are always whole numbers. So it's better to divide by the smaller one, to a better chance of getting more whole numbers that way, right? So I'm going to divide each one by this number here. So this is going to be one mole of O per every one mole of O. So that becomes kind of silly, but that's kind of like where I'm starting, right? Dividing by that number, 
Then I'm going to take 6.3. And divide it by 0.96, and I get 6.49. Bummer. Actually, it's 499. So let's call it 6.50. And then the next one, 8.71 divided by 0.969 is um, 8.99 all right that's kind of screwed up right why is it why why some people some people recognize why this is screwed up it's, well, it's empirical, and you have a half an atom. Exactly. So you can't have half an atom. So if you double everything, multiply everything by two. So, for example, this is the way uh, it's commonly shown. Right now I have this, C, 6.5, or 6.5, H, 9, Oh, that's kind of what I have, right? I can't have a half an atom in a formula. So what you do is you double everything. So I'm going to put a subscript 2 out here. That means multiply all of these subscripts by 2. And that's going to be C13, 8, or C13? Yeah, C13, H18, O2. And that's the formula for ibuprofen. It turns out also to be its molecular formula. It's empirical formula and molecular formula end up being the same thing. So I'm going to back up for a second and look at one of the slides I skipped, okay? The reason you know that is because you can't uh, divide the through by two and reduce it. I can't, yeah, I can't get it well, any, I can't, because i got a half. Because of 13 is what passes it Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's what I'm saying. That's why I know it's molecular yeah, and empirical. Yeah, go ahead. So you get the moles by... The middle step there. You got the you got the moles by timesing the mass of one. I took yeah this yeah. divided by its molar mass. Okay. Thank yeah. You. Okay, so I'm gonna go back. I want to show you something really quick. It's this. So a lot of times you get a fractional subscript, right? So what we just had was a half. So I had uh, 6.5, right? Multiply it by 2 to get rid of the fraction. If you get 0.66, that's a 2 thirds actually, you multiply it by 3, right? If you get 0.75, you multiply it by 4. So this is the factors that you multiply the subscripts by if you don't get whole numbers in your empirical formula. Basically, this is like 1 over 10, 1 over 5, 1 over 4, 1 over 3, 1 over... Right? It's just the inverse of these numbers. So I often tell people, you know, don't memorize this table. When you get to a test and you get this fractional empirical formula and you don't know what makes it a whole number, try multiplying it by numbers between 1 and 10 and see what you get. Okay? Just do it empirically, basically, by observation. Okay, questions? I'm done. That's the whole chapter-ish. It's a whole chapter-ish. You know what ish means, right? It's kind of the whole thing.